our position was not that. We were against the white men because of the white skin. Not at all. We regard the white colored and Indians as human beings like ourselves. The only thing is see, we wanted to unite against white domination. To overthrow white domination, destroy it, and open the way for a democratic society here in which every human being will be recognized as a human being and have full rights as such a human being, you see. In which the people would work together to build up a new South Africa, you see. Da, uh extended this and uh, in nationalism he was able to say Africa for Africans and Africans for humanity and then went further and said humanity for God. Sobukwe brought about the idea of uh, the African personality. He posited that it can only be achieved if the whole of Africa becomes one nation. My impression of him was that uh, he was an intellectual. He was quite accurate in, in English and was a well-spoken man, polite and, uh, of course, nationalistic. He was a nationalist. Multiracialism was nothing but apartheid multiplied, you see, as far as we are concerned. I was not accepted that uh, we should work, work together with the people who are fighting against this. Because my question was that, whom do I fight against? If now I'm working with the people now who are oppressing us. We began to be critical of the old guard, of all the leaders of the ANC. We found that now these, these fellows were, were too liberal, were too soft on the, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on, the, on the whites. The African people are the most important factor in the struggle for emancipation for Africa. They being the majority. Yes. So the, the, the struggle that we, we, the youth said must be based on African nationalism. You see, yes, the assertion of the African people as a people capable of shaping their own destiny. They said the Freedom Charter must be the product of Africans and Africans only. We said no. The Freedom Charter must involve everybody. That's why we wrote uh, to people, everybody throughout the country, send us your demands. Whether it was blacks in the sense of Africans, colors and Indians, or whites, Africans or English speaking, we called for demands that, that should be set out in the Freedom Charter. That was the difference <coughs> between the PAC and us. And uh, we couldn't agree that uh, this is something that should be confined purely to Africans. Well, they call it the Freedom Charter. We call it the Freedom Cheater. Because in the first place, you could not say that the country belongs to all who live in it. To this day, there is no such a thing. The Germans can no such understand when they are colonized, the, the Jews in Israel, there's no country, there's no nation in the world that has suddenly said that the country belongs to everybody, when they knew very well that at that time that on the, the majority of this country was confined to 13% of the country. The status campaign was very important because clearly colonialism had so uh, damaged the minds of the people and conditioned them into accepting inferiority that uh, the PAC came up with uh, saying that uh, we must exercise the demon of inferiority complex. Each and every individual must uh, experience the brush with the law by, uh, through the status campaign. So in other words, if you go into a post office, you stand your ground in the queue. If there's a fight, you, you, you fight it out.